Hey, I got another one from Akihabara. I swear I've got a problem. I'm always at Akihabara picking up something new and something I don't really need. But I was down there the other day and um, I was having a look in this store. Um, it's called a Kesokuki Land. .co.jp. They're a, uh, a retailer of uh, test equipment, so you, you can walk in there and off the shelf you can buy your Tektronix or your Rodenschwartz or your Keysight or your Rigol, Fleur, all that sort of stuff. Um, really high-end stuff, all the way down to uh, more basic sort of stuff, like the uh, Rigols and um, they might do some other um, like lower-end brands, but yeah, they, they do a lot of stuff. And also they've got a very big range of um, second-hand equipment, which... Uh, in my opinion, is sometimes a little bit too highly priced, but the reason for that, I think, is because it, it comes fully tested, guaranteed, and uh, was calibrated very recently. Like, you know, it's all ready to go for straight into production. But um, for someone like me that just builds stuff and fixes stuff on my bench, I don't care if it was uh, calibrated last week or three years ago. You know, but I was in the store anyway, um, having a look, because I do have a some reasonable price on some things, and um, they have like a, a junk section where. Yeah, there's something that's not quite worth their time to fix. They'll sell it for real cheap, and they'll tell you like, you know, the power switch is broken, or this range is out of out of range, or whatever. And I was having a look at that stuff, and I found this. Um, not the plastic bag, but what's inside. Uh, for about a thousand yen, so that's about ten bucks or so, ten or twelve bucks. I bought a cardboard box, very nice cardboard box. I've got an area here to put a address on there, and it says "Made in China" on the side. But um, what I'm most interested in is what came along inside the box. So um, I'll get the uh, the old knife and we'll cut it open. And it is an M-1006K multimeter. Like just a little basic, you know, the things you get from Harbour Freight or yeah, the cheap multimeters. But the difference with this is that it's a kit. We sold it ourselves. It's so cheap that they wouldn't even put it together for us. But um, I thought, yeah, that could be a, an interesting diversion. Have a look at uh, what's inside here. And uh, we'll um, put it together and see how we go. I think I've already seen one little problem with the, uh, the mask on there. It's cut at an angle here. But that's alright, it's black on black and it's... Um, yeah, we'll deal with that later. But yeah, it's got all the, uh, the bits in here. There's a current shunt there and a battery snap. And there's the uh, LC screen. And all the resistors, diode there, one in 4007. So um, yeah, we'll um, thought we'll put this together and uh, see how well it works. Or we'll compare it to the uh, the old Keysight 34461A that I've got sitting just up here, and uh, that's a six and a half digit. And compare it, see how good it is. I've got a few uh, precision resistors as well, so um, we'll see how it reads against those. So I figure we'll um cut this thing open and start putting it together and uh, see how boring it gets yeah it looks like they've uh, they've cut a bit too close there on that um, on that front sticker but I don't think that's going to be too much of a problem I mean it's not like I'm really going to use this thing too much once I've finished with it I just saw it there and went oh it'll be fun for about 10 minutes and um, then we'll put it away and forget about it so anyway it's all in Japanese completely in Japanese but hopefully yes it's got all the uh, designations on there R1, R2, D1 blah 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 and there should be a list there we go all the, re the, the uh, resistors there capacitors there the part numbers, so we can go like D1 is the 1 in 4.07, R1 is a 548k, 0.5%. So, I'll fire up the uh, soldering iron. Oh, it tells you how to solder. Um, because uh, I always need to be reminded, after about 30 years of soldering. And, um, yeah, some specifics about putting things in, you know, if they're standing up or laying flat. It's even got a plug for the... Uh, transistor tester because all cheap multimeters have that transistor tester in there for some reason and um, it looks like maybe this is testing it here 5 volt DC through a 1 ohm resistor and whatnot so anyway let's get into it oh there's a schematic there too that's cool 
of some description, a few schematics here and there. I wonder if there's a overall schematic, or just in pieces. Oh, there it is. No, what's that? Yep, that's a schematic. And then all of these bars in the middle are probably all of this. I would say. So, let's crack this thing open. Fire up the uh, soldering iron and get started. Now, let's have a look. I can see here, these resistors here, they're going to be standing up. But the ones like down here, are going to be laying flat to the PCB. So that's pretty straightforward. We might do the resistors first. Get all those out of the way. Generally I'd try and go from the lowest component up to the tallest component because it means things don't get in the way so so much. Oh got a few there. All labelled. So what have we got? R9. Where's R9? 0 0.01. There is no R9 here. Unless that's just a wire link. R8, 0 0.99 ohm, 0 0.9, 0 0.09, but here it says 0 0.99. Interesting. So some of the values are different, and some of the things don't line up. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. There's missing parts. Well, this doesn't match this, at least. And then some of the, uh, the values don't line up. R7 is a 9 ohm. Yeah, that's a 9 ohm. Unless that's a typo on one or the other. R13, 100 ohm, that matches up. R6, another 100 ohm. Yeah, so most of it matches up, but it looks like they've put a decimal point in the wrong position somewhere. Oh, well, I'm going to put it back straight together as it is and see what happens. I'm not going to go replacing stuff. We're going to do it as it's supplied and see what happens. I've got my lead former here. I remember how to use it. Like that. Okay, so the diode. Where's diode one? There.
see the uh, pot here if you look on the other side there's a hole there looks like the idea is you can put a screwdriver in there and you can turn the pot but there's no hole in the circuit board so you can't unless that's where a button would have gone for whatever that transistor was for unless that's where the button would have gone for the uh, the backlight but on the uh, label there's nothing there so who knows could be for a few different models or something Alright, so what's the next page say we've got to do? Plug it in and turn it on. Alright. I've got a 9 volt battery over here, I think. Here we go. 9 volt battery. So, plug that in. Yeah. Looks like the uh, the screen's not getting good contact. I've probably got it dislodged, so I'll play with that and get that working right. I'll be back in it just a sec. Okay, time to test this thing out. Uh, I'm trying to make this as fair as possible, so I've put some deoxid in the um, the contacts there, so make sure we've got a good connection. Uh, I've got my uh, DC reference standard here, my Fluke 731B, just off of camera. That's set to the 10 volt range. Uh, we've got a Yokogawa 2554 DC voltage and current standard just sitting up there off camera. That's good for 100 volts maximum output and uh, 100 milliamps out maximum output. All DC. I haven't got any um, AC gear yet, but we'll get a good idea of how this thing's going to perform anyway. Um, my uh, my Fluke uh, 332B, I think it is, or 332D. Uh, is still in the process of being restored, so I can't go up to a thousand volts on the DC range. But once that's done, then I'll be able to for future projects. Anyway, uh, let's give this thing a go. Uh, I've got the uh, 731 connected here, and it is currently putting out 10.00003 volts. So it's pretty close to 10 volts. So let's turn this to the 20 volt range, and we want to plug this one in here. This is, by the way, a low EMF a cable. It's very, uh, very accurate. It's shielded. I've shielded it with the um, the braid. So whatever voltage that's putting out, it's going to be almost exactly coming here. It's as, as good as I can possibly make it in this, uh, this little setup I've got. So we're getting 10.01 volts. 02 volts. So that's like 0.2%, I guess. That's not too bad. I mean, it's not that difficult to make a uh, an accurate voltmeter. The, the big dollars comes in with the um, all the protection circuitry inside, all the MOVs and uh, diodes and all that sort of stuff. So let's turn this down to 1 volt. 1.01, let's turn this one down to the 2000 millivolts. Still looking pretty good. That's 1000, which is basically 1000 millivolts, 1 volt. So that's not too bad at all. So we'll flick that up to 200 volts, and I'll take that out of there, stick it into the Yokogawa, and have the Yokogawa set to 100 volts. Okay, 200 volts there, let's flick the output on. And that is 100 volts, 100.3, so we're, we're still pretty accurate. 100.3, that's like 0.3%. Not too shabby. 
All right, well, let's flick that output off. Turn that around to the 200 milliamps, and let's try to 100 milliamps. Turn that on. 1%. Yeah, there we go, 1%. So it's, it's all right. It'll do the job. I wouldn't trust it, like, testing against a, uh, mains voltages. I wouldn't, I wouldn't plug this thing, this thing into mains voltages, especially not in, like, a European or Australian voltages, 230, 240 volts. Um, in Japan we get 100. America is obviously 115 or thereabouts. I probably wouldn't because of the, uh, low impedance of the, uh, supply would, if they have a fault, would quickly blow the arse end out of this thing, like, nobody's business so um yeah but for testing things like your your bat car battery or yeah you know, testing nine volt batteries and double a's and triple a's and using on a breadboard you know make sure you got five volts here and 12 volts there it'll do the job but i would suggest buying something a bit better i wouldn't spend money on this again <laughs> it's not that great i mean not even the the top the uh the top label there is cut right uh, yeah, so save up a few more dollars and get something decent, even something like a Uni-T, uh, Uni-T brand would be better. Uh, yeah, I think Dave from EV, EV, Dave from EEV Blog has done a few shootouts on uh, multimeters and there's some good ones there for some good prices. So yeah, these things, they're so crap, they even give them away cheap from, or even for free from, uh, like, uh, Harbor Freight and that sort of stuff in the States. Yeah, so, um, I'm gonna give this thing... I'll give it one thumbs up because it is reading pretty good, but I've got to give it a thumbs down because of the uh, the uh, input protection is almost non-existent. It does have a fuse. It does have a fuse, a glass fuse, but it does have a fuse, but there's nothing else there. So, um, yeah, I, I can't really recommend it in good conscience because uh, if you do hook it up something bad, something big and bad, like a, um, like a mains outlet and it does go bang, it's going to really go bang. Anyway, I hope you found that somewhat interesting. Um, I'll try and have some more interesting stuff later. But um, yeah, uh, if, you, if you like what you see, hit the subscribe button and we'll see you next time.